Why trading is like Squid Games. Have you watched Squid Games on Netflix? Seemingly everyone's watched it. Something like 111 million people have watched it. Something crazy, it's like the biggest show they've ever had on Netflix. I've watched it, it's only kind of six, maybe it's nine episodes. Uh, long, I, I thought it was quite enjoyable. It's quite enjoyable. And if you haven't watched it, check it out. It's a violent thing, psychological games. I'm sure you've already watched it if you're hitting this video now. You're probably like, what is he on about? Trading and Squid Games. Um, I don't watch loads of stuff. I'm not a big, avid box set person. I like Billions. I haven't caught up on the latest one yet, but I'm planning on doing that because I really enjoyed that. I think I might start it and kind of refresh myself um, again because obviously trading guys, hedge funds, you know why we don't want to watch it. But anyway, Squid Games, one of the recent things I have watched. And I thought, hmm, there's a lot of parallels with trading with this. I wonder if a trader wrote this. And maybe if you're a trader, you'll get with this. So the first thing is, how oh, do you like my guy? He's chasing him. That's a knife. Yeah, of course it's a knife. It's bloody. He's running. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, your friends, then you're competing to the death. In other words, everyone's chatting all friendly and yes, trading and this and that and talking strategy. But in the arena, when you're day trading, it's every man for himself. Everyone's trying to compete and make the best trades. So the person you were conversing with on the bulletin board five minutes ago is now your opponent and you want to take his money and he wants to take your money. And it's the kind of this weird analogy that we don't kind of speak about. We kind of think, oh, yeah, it's all a team and all this. But ultimately, you know, money's coming from somewhere. Now, it'd be nice if the retail takes it from institutional. And if you're following that price action methodology and you're trying to ride the institutional coattails, that's generally what you're trying to do. And somebody's like, you can't take it from institutional. We're not taking it per se, but their lack of care in terms of, hey, they don't care if they're getting filled on the bid or the offer or how much they pay on this day because they're holding it for 10 years is our edge. That's partly what we can do and take that money. So that was something I thought about. So everyone's friends and all of a sudden like stabbing each other and trying to compete and dying. Um, not quite to the death in trading, luckily, but the death of your trading account potentially. After hours gets nasty. If you've watched it, you'll know what I mean. When the lights go out, you know, it's all chaos, it's a big fight and everyone's just trying to kill each other and it's just horrible. Um, maybe not the same, but I just thought it's funny when the bell goes uh, and you've got these after hours movements on the market, the Dow and the Nasdaq, sometimes it can be quite spicy and it can get quite nasty. You know, there's sort of competition going on and you're kind of trying to, maybe you're gonna stay out of it, you're hoping your stop doesn't get triggered. Um, it, you know, it can get a little bit nasty. I thought that was quite funny. Number three, you don't know what's next. This is, this is super, super use, uh, a common analogy or, or correct analogy, should I say. You, you know, if you watch that Squid Games, they've got a game where they compete and they kind of, some people die in this game, some people survive, and they're trying to figure out what the game's gonna be next, but it varies from a kind of very focused, you know, um, motor skill type game where they're kind of rapid, doing honeycomb um, and trying to pop out the shape thing, and, and then, to another one where it's like a very, very physical game. I don't want to spoil it if you haven't watched it, but a very physical game. And the point is they don't know what's coming next and what skills they're gonna need. A little bit like trading, you go into the day and you don't know what's coming next. It's like, is it gonna be a trending day? Is it gonna be a rotational day? Is it gonna be a quiet day, volatility? Are we gonna get some event risk? Are we gonna do this? Are we gonna do that? You don't really know. You've got an idea, you've got to compete. You know, but you don't know what skill set you're gonna use yet. Am I gonna be mean reversion? Am I gonna be trending in? Am I gonna be this? Am I gonna be that? I'm gonna to have to be careful about over trading. What's the situation? And we start to wonder and we just don't know. And that's the beauty of trading. Um, the fourth thing is if you overthink, you go mad. So I think I want mad per se in there, but there's a lot of overthinking about what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen, spending all the evening overthinking, trying to think about the game. And you couldn't really, you couldn't really work out what the game was gonna be, uh, unless you're that guy who could work out, again, try not to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. But the point is in trading, you know, when you're not trading, you need to just have that downtime, relax and refresh, not overthinking about what if this could happen, what if that's could happen. Just assume you're prepared enough to deal with whatever the market throws at you and, and be, take comfort in that and don't try and overthink things, otherwise it just drives you crazy. Fifth thing is create your own edge to win. There was one game, um, again, I, try not, I don't know why, I hope hopefully it's all seen, so again, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but there was one game where one guy, you remember this one, guys, if you've seen it on the bridge, the guy had his edge where he was looking at the two sheets of glass, and he had an edge where he was able to tell what the sheet of glass was, and that was his edge, and ultimately his edge disappeared, but the point is, 
I just thought it's interesting because, you know, a trader gets success when they find their own little edge, whatever that is, and they use it as much as they can until it disappears. So if you're finding your own edge, and the same with the uh, tug of war up on the big platform, there was an edge there, skill. If you have an edge that's different, you will win. And it's a little bit like trading. If you find something that's a little bit different from the crowd, that's where you'll start to win. And the final thing, I just put as a bit of a joke, but you guys have watched it, 001 is probably Goldman Sachs. <laughs> anyway, take care, see you next one, bye-bye.